I never wanted to be anything else than a church planting missionary. It's all I had done since I was 20 years old, until I was 33 or so, 34, 30, somewhere in there. And in an instant, our visas were denied. And I was thrown into some, you know, some years, really, of some real depression, discouragement, uh, even identity crisis. Who am I? I'm, I'm a church planter in New Guinea. I never wanted to do anything else. We lost it. Couldn't go back. I, I made several trips back and forth to New Guinea, trying to find any way back in. Every door locked, closed, no way. And so we, we didn't know what to do. We ended up at the U.S. Center for World Mission. Uh, the, we'd heard about them. They hadn't heard about us. And uh, just through a long process of meeting people like, like Ralph Winter and Don Richardson and others uh, who had been involved with tribal people, um, the, the dream began to be, the seed of a dream began to be planted in me, especially as I got a little bit older, that uh, uh, even as, well, here's a prophetic word. You believe in prophetic words. Here's a prophetic word from, from my pastor. When I called him from Pasadena and said, Brother, I want, we want to come home uh, back to Texas. We can't get back into Papua New Guinea. And he said, Praise God, brother. Praise God. And I wasn't praising God. I was still in depression and discouragement from not being able to return. He said, no, this is from God. He said, use your experience of all of these years. Use it. Go back to New Guinea two or three times a year if you wish. But stay on this side of the water. Train others. The need of the hour is for more missionaries. But not just missionaries. We need the right kind of missionaries. How are we going to get the right kind of missionaries if some of the right kind don't come home and train them? Well, I didn't like it. I was still rebuking it in Jesus' name, that word. You know, casting it out, in, you know, if I could. But I did store it up in my heart, the beginning of this dream. And as we came to Texas, as I began to uh, learn about unreached peoples, even in Mexico, that I hope we can even talk about uh, tonight, um, God just began bringing me people. And we were just a fledgling little organization, you know, with three or four people working with us when, when I got a call from John Piper in, in 2005, and he invited me to speak at the 2006 uh, Pastors Conference. And from that conference, brother, you know, uh, I don't know if you remember, but we certainly remember what God did on that day, February 1st, 2006, when we called out for a, a tithe of 140 because I'd been told there were 1,400 pastors there. Lord, would you give us 140 from this room today, tonight, for the nations? Lord, would you redirect many? He did it. And, and I can track. It's been almost five years. I can track about 80 people. It's not the full tithe yet. You know, maybe we've got it and I don't know about it. But I, I can track about 80 or 85 people that God has either brought to us on our staff, brought through our school, and who are now on the field, or who I know are working with other agencies uh, with unreached peoples uh, from that day. And so I'm here to, uh, to uh, collect the rest of the tithe. <laughs>